Okay, last but not least, uh, a, a flavour from the jewellery selection. Good selection of watches for you to look at. Uh, diamonds galore of all forms uh, and uh, models, I should say. 507, there's a lovely uh, Gosh, bright uh, solitaire. There's two or three good big stones in the sale, as well as a rather splendid cluster. Again, there's nice shiny brightness to it. Uh, 502, we've got a bit of Cartier. There's a Cartier necklace that's sitting with its box. There's also some Cartier bracelets and earrings and such like. Um, for the more unusual items, how about 431? Have a look at that. Is that going to get it? There we go. Uh -huh. So um, why do we think that's good? Well, because it's got a, a pearl and it's got a, a natural pearl. There's the certificate to prove it. A natural sort of pearl, um, which are, as we've seen in the past few years, all the rage at the moment. There are also some natural pearl necklaces and, uh, it, and, a, and a rather nice stick pin in the sale. So I suspect those will attract a lot of interest. And then other less expensive uh, items of jewellery right the way through from, from early antique through to more contemporary, such as these sort of ruby earrings. Look how That's they're set around that side. And then they put them on the inside to catch the back. Gorgeous so you lovely. get the sort of solid impression. Like Clever. That. So there we go. Really nice lot. Come along and see us. We're going to be on view Friday, Saturday, uh, and then the Monday before the sale on the Tuesday. So hope to see you there. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, so in the silver, again, interesting silver, but I thought I'd show you a selection of the more novelty items in the sale. Uh, let's go roughly in date order. Starting about 349, this is a classic Nathaniel Mills, what they call a castle top vinaigrette because it's decorated with a view. Well, it's not a castle. I think that's Abbotsbury. But um, a grand country house or castle is typically what is used to decorate them with a nice pierced grill. Really quite collectible. Slot 349. Uh, staying with collectible and novelty Victorian, there's a cheroot or cigar cutter. Nicely decorated, enameled with the dog. Mm -hmm. Lot 374. Uh, back here, we say royal interest. Pray why we say, well, here's a lovely traveling cup. There we go, telescopic. Uh, inscribed Alfred with the date 1850 or 59. There's the hallmarks on the side. And then a nice big long inscription um, presented by the uh, Duchess of Saxe Coburg, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, you're getting that? Yeah. Yep, great. So with its original traveling case, there's also some other presentation, uh, Royal Silver, in the sale. Um, then uh, moving forwards to sort of the Edwardian era or thereabouts, bit of arts and crafts, this is Liberty & Co, uh, just a dinky little box, but nicely enameled. Um, there was a chap called Varley who did quite a bit, it's very much in the manner of Varley. That's lot 376. Then more modern, lot 387, Gerald Benny is a name that people talk about a lot. Uh, you'll see his sort of parcel gilt textured um, works for tableware. This is much more plain, it's just a paperweight, but it's rather lovely. So there's a very heavy ingot of silver with this sort of textured decoration. Um, around the sides. That is not 387. Um, and last but not least, uh, some Lithibus II uh, novelty silverware condiments this time. Two teddy bears, pretty heavy because they're cast, sign of quality being cast. They look that sort of nice dumpy look where they're sort of flopped down. <laughs> lot 385. And if you don't like bears but you prefer penguins, then we've got a three piece set there. Dinky little mustard pot with the salt and pepper. Again, solid cast silver. Elizabeth II, lot 388. So there's some fun silverware for you. In the pictures then, good selection of portraits as ever. Then moving on in time a little bit, how about this, Arthur uh, Davis. Um, he travelled to India and painted a series of depictions of native tradesmen and life in Bengal. Um, I think 36 pictures are known. This is one of them, the Weaver's Workshop. Uh, rather splendid thing. Uh, estimate five to 8,000, should go on and make a bit more. Uh, came again from a local property. So uh, that's really quite unusual. If you look at those, you'll find a number of them in public collections. So it's a fairly important painting. Uh, otherwise, for something completely different, and showing you this wonderful carpet, it is lovely. lot 149 as we go past, good size, look at that, there's a, there's a good lot of carpets again in the sale, but around here, something different, in the picture section, so is it art, is it crafts, well it's in the picture section, so it must be art, lot 268 is the first lot for Gwendolyn Beatrice White, who produced what was called at the time, uh, white work, um, or white wood work, um, essentially taking this plain wood and making it into something, decorating it with something interesting. So we have the seven ages of man there. 
um, with various verses from Shakespeare inscribed all the round. And then with it, a piece from her London College, probably her final year piece, I would imagine, depicting green sleeves. So we open up this triptych and there we go. Rather splendid um, poetry within the two panels to either side. Lovely gilt decoration down below. And as always, with everything good, always look at the back. And if the back's good, there's a nice monogram on the back. And we have with it a letter from um, the, the gentleman that bought this from her. He, he was able to buy it from the exhibition, thanking her for allowing him to buy it. So that sort of puts it in its place. Quite obscure. Um, her work was featured in the studio at the time, and we've got a cutting from the studio and various other cuttings to go with it. The sort of quite nice to actually revive her work because it seems that these have sort of slipped through the net and she's moderately unknown. If you Google her name, you tend to get, I think, an American maker of dolls or something, but that's not her. These are her. So those are nice things. Uh, otherwise, the usual panoply of works. We've got some lovely Thornley and other marine paintings. We've got a cracking John Frederick Herring uh, winter farmyard scene, real big one. And a Damien Hurst. If you want something more up to date, funny duddy stuff, then there's a great big bright glittery blingy Damien Hurst print. So uh, a whole selection of art for you, really nice lot um, and well worth coming to see. Okay. Wandering through, couldn't help but stop for a, a rather splendid pair of uh, Vanini for Murano uh, chandeliers. Look at these splendid things. Uh, that's locked 180, you need a bit of a heat ceiling height to get those in, we, we still haven't. Uh, and then really the reason I stopped and wanted to show you this is, like 167, this sort of late Regency period, um, architects or folio desk. So we have flaps that come up, they ratchet up and fix like that. And then we also have ratchets that come up that way so that you can tilt your folios. We'll have had little brass hook pins to hold books and folios in place, but otherwise all complete. And then these rather nice brass grilled doors opening up to reveal later adjustable shelves. But a, a, a nice piece of for that. If, you, if you're after a good folio cabinet, you'd struggle to find one better. So it's a good bit of furniture. Now I will take you to the pictures. Are those Winston Churchill's chairs? And these are Winston Churchill's ah. chairs sitting, sitting next to it. Very yes, nice. From his house in Hyde Park Gate. So for something else different and interesting, how about lot 31, arts and crafts, and arms. Uh, Guild of Artis Artificers, I think we've described these two. Rather splendid pair, this very sort of strong arts and crafts look. Again, if you, if you look those up, you'll find the model um, appears occasionally, but fairly scarce. That's lot 31, splendid pair of andines. You need a good grate to go with them. Uh, and then Philip's been very busy dealing with all sorts of things, including Winston Churchill. Items related to the uh, sculptor, uh, Oscar Neiman. And we've got two rather splendid maquettes in the cell, but from the same source, here's a photograph, Winston at work, so to speak, painting with his mild stick. This painters use that to steady their hand while they're oh. doing the brushwork. You can sort of rest your wrist on it and do it. So that's lot five. Um, we've also got Marilyn Monroe, um, as well as uh, Edward the Seventh and um, the late Queen and her other half as well. So an interesting mixture of photographs right at the beginning of the sale. Um, the Emily Eden India album, Princes and Peoples of India, 25 to 35,000. Have a good look at the online listing. Great description, really good essay written up all about them. There's the Churchill maquette, lot nine, four to 6,000 pound estimate. And then more well known, this maquette of Winston, uh, which I think has got an estimate of 8 to 1200. Uh, there's another Winston photograph. So a nice little selection of Churchilliana there, and, and it does do very well. I think his desk sold recently for about 400,000, so we shall see. The sale does include a pair of chairs that belong to Winston. Then, otherwise, what am I going to show you? In ceramics, one of these, if you haven't seen this before, you'll go, wow, look at that. And it is rather splendid, isn't it? Staffordshire bull baiting group. Uh, always considered sort of perhaps not the rarest, but quite desirable for Staffordshire collectors, early Staffordshire. And look at this dog sort of flying through the air with its teeth. A great sort of naive charm to it. Um, that's in the sale with a group of Toby jugs of uh, similar age. And then a rather nice pair, lot 71, of these sort of what they call Ralph Wood type deer. And again, look at the modelling. It's just so much sort of superior to the later 
Victorian Staffordshire. So some interesting pottery. There's a selection of Oriental as ever for you to browse through. And then we'll go and have a look at the pictures. Hello, Gorringes are on view, this time for our spring fine sale, 12th of March. We've been beavering away through the winter to some extent, and a slow start has then sort of towards the end rapidly escalated and got quite busy. So what have we got for you in this sale? Well, various strengths and weaknesses. I'm going to show you just a few key items, just give you some sort of taste of it. And then you can look at the online flip catalogue, you can look at the website, you can even better come and have a view and see the splendours. What can I point out to you? Well, uh, how about this? Here's a very traditional bronze, lot 39. Jean Bouliot, the uh, French sculpture, rather splendid. If you Google Bouliot, and people Google everything these days, don't they? You'll see a variety, but not many of this sort of stature and quality. Uh, there is a title, uh, Enfant Charmeur. Um, I guess he's uh, playing so delightfully that he's um, delighting the lovebirds or something along those lines. Anyway, nice thing, came out of property in Eastbourne. Uh, next to it, somewhat more dramatic and a little more modern, lot 49, uh, Huguenet was the uh, sculptor for this. So we're looking at sort of much more French art deco and this very dramatic uh, sculpture here with a lovely original stepped marble base. So that's lot 49. And uh, then just catching up here from the same source, came over from France, lot 44, um, some years ago. Uh, this is Alexis Rudier and uh, this rather splendid sort of silvered um, acrobatic Dancer, she's balancing the ball behind her neck. You can see that rather nice. That's lot 44, estimate 12 to 1500. So, other bronzes in the sale, including Anna Marlier. I'm going to show you something else now.